Okay, this is the cash budgeting question from 2015 paper. Uh, I want to focus mainly on the, the budget tables, so the cash budget, more than the profit and loss. I might maybe do that as a second video. So, let's start with the basic document. And we'll focus on getting the word structure in here first before we start looking at numbers. So, we have expected selling price is 50 euro per unit. And... We know the amount of euros um, that we're going to take in. So you divide that by 50 and it gives us the amount of units. So that might be useful for later on. So uh, we have cash sales, uh, credit customers. 80% is credit customers. They will pay 50% of the month after sale and the remainder in the second month. So we have debtors one month and we have debtors two months. Okay. Um, so, uh, so that's dealing with that, and I'm going to take into account discounts and stuff after. Cash payments. Credit suppliers. Purchases 50% of the month after purchase, 2% discounts, remaining purchases are whatever. So, we have no cash purchases. We've credited one month, credited two months. Okay. Um, other costs. So, we have wages. Um, variable overheads. Fixed overheads, including depreciation. So I need to take out my depreciation. Okay. Um, and uh, capital costs. Equipment purchased. So I'm going to buy equipment. Um, okay, we'll have a use for five years. That's where I'm going to get my depreciation from. Uh, finance purchase alone will be secured at 6% finance. So I'm going to put my loan here as an inflow. Um, capital sum is repaid in 36 monthly installments, and interest is to pay the last day of each month. So that means um, so I'll squeeze down maybe a couple of more lines just in case I need extra rows. So I'll have my loan, uh, the capital repayment, and I'll have my loan interest. Um, interest rate based on the amount outstanding on that date. So obviously that the interest will go down as I pay off bits and bits of the loan. Okay. So um, that is it nothing else in there that uh, concerns me so um my sales and just quickly second he's setting up the business so he won't be paying off anything that's relevant for before january oh, this is the first is seventh so i'll be starting on in months will be uh, july um august september october So my cash sales. So 20% uh, for immediate cash and cash discount of 5%. Uh, now, 5% of 20 is uh, 1%. So that means I'm going to get 19% uh, in July. So And the remaining 80%, uh, so 50% of my last sale remaining the second month after sale. So that means I'm going to have 4, uh, 420 uh, times uh, 0.8, so that's the 80%, and times 0.5, so half of that, so that'll be 0.4. So I get paid that then, and I'll get 168 there as well, two months there. There's no discounts there. So and zero is paid there, zero is paid there, zero is paid there. Uh, August. So you have 440 times 19%. Um, 440 times, now, uh, point, so 440 times, times 0.8, that's 80%. I multiply that by a half, okay? And you get the same figure there. Um, 580. So 
0.5 n times 0.8 and then times 0.5. Same over there. And then 590. And then November. So November is 620. 19% 620 times 0.8 times 0.5 times 0.5 and in December so 90% there and then we have 6 8.5 and then we'll have the same number is going to be letters. So all of those three then are going to be debtors that we'll owe if we're doing a uh, bond sheet. Um, so we dealt with that. Credit suppliers. First you pay 50% of a purchase when a 2% cash discount. Okay. So um, so we're going to buy we're going to pay nothing in the first month the credit is one month or the credit is two month um so the purchase that happened uh in january is going to be paid for here so uh purchases is 180 and they're going to pay for 50 percent of that in just quickly check in the month after um purchase so i get a two percent cash discount so two percent of 50 is 1%, so I'm going to pay 49% for that, okay, and I'm going to pay for the second month, okay, so I'll pay for um, 180 times 0.5 the second month, and we have 220 times 0.49 and uh, 2 20 times 0.5 and we have 260 times 0.49 remember the 49 just to reiterate again is 50% of the sales of 260 times 50% and I'm taking away 2% of that figure so 2% of 50% is 1% that's where the 49 comes from. So I'm taking 1% of 50 away to get 49. And so we have uh, 260 times 0.5. And then we have uh, 265 times 340 and then December which is going to be paid one month after is 370 times 0.49 times no, I think I've got that way. So December purchase was not paid for December. We should be paying 340. Let's just quickly check. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, I need to check all my numbers here. So uh, I think I've taken it. Got the month out, so that's 180, 220, uh, 260, 265, 340, 370. So that's 340, yeah, 370. Yeah, sorry. 
So that's 370.5. Okay. And that's that. Uh, so now let's look at wages. Wages 60 payables incurred. So that's every month. We pay every month. Um, variable overheads 10 per unit uh, payable as incurred. And this is where this uh, expected selling price is going to tell us the number of units. So um, when I divide my 50, and this is selling price, uh, 50 per unit, so 50 divided into 420, that'll give me the number of units, and I'll multiply that by 10. So what I could do instead is easier if I, if I just divide the 420 by 5, that'll give me my variable overheads. So that are divided by 5 multiplied by 10 to get the same number. So equals 420 divided by 5 uh, equals 440 divided by 5 uh, equals 580 divided by 5 uh, equals 590 divided by 5 and equals 620. By five. No, um, I'm not having one more six twenty five. Okay, fixed overheads. Now, I I have to take out my depreciation, so I need to deal with that first. So the equipment is going to be bought on the first of July, costing forty two. So I put that in here, forty two, and. It's going to have a useful life of five years. So five years is 60 uh, months. So I'll be taking away a 60th every year um, to get my depreciation. So if I just do this over here. So 42 is what it costs. Divide that by 60. Um, so 60 months, so 700 a month. So my fixed overheads is going to be 65 grand minus the 700. So equals 65 minus 700. It's useful to do that rough work over the side because even if I make a mistake with my maths, if I've shown that I've taken a depreciation away to get my 64.3, I get most of my marks, even if it turns out I've worked out my depreciation wrong. So the equipment is only taken out in one month, so I don't need it any other month. Um, so the capital sum repaid for 36 monthly installments. I'm going to have to have here getting the loan. So I'm getting a loan of 36. Um, so that was going to be 6% per annum, and I'm taking it out on the 1st of July. Capital sum repaid in 36 monthly installments commencing on the 1st of August. So. I'm paying nothing here, okay, 1st of August. Well, now, because I'm going to be paying on the 1st, yeah, okay, I'll put it into nothing on that month, and then I'll be paying uh, 1,000 this month, 1,000 this month, 1,000 this month. So I only have paid five months of capital repayments. The loan interest, the interest for each month is paid in the last day of that month based on the amount of the loan outstanding at that date. So that means the last day of July, I would have had the loan for the whole of the month of July. Now the interest is 6% per annum, so per month it's going to be 0.5%. So the interest is going to be uh, 36 grand multiplied by, uh, now it's half of a percent, so it's point. Zero zero five. And uh, the next month it's going to be the same. So it's going to be now I'll have paid off a thousand from the thirty six. So it'll be thirty five as well times point zero zero five. No, that's not right. So it equals thirty five times point zero zero five. Um, so there's thirty four grand. 
times 0 0.005, so that's 5%. And then 33 grams times 0 0.005, um, 32 grams times 0 0.005, 31 grams times 0 0.005. Okay. So that's all of those, so we can finish off now. So we sum add all of that. And if I just copy that and paste that across. And down here I'll do something similar. So the net cash inflow, let's go short now. So net cash is going to be the total uh, inflow, take away the outflow. And I'll do the same thing all the way along each month. So I'll copy that, paste in the same formula. Now the opening cash, this is a brand new business. They had no money mentioned in the bank account at the beginning, so we'll say the opening cash is zero, so the balance is going to be the opening cash um, plus, uh, so the opening balance plus the net cash. Now, some questions they'll have financing, or they might put in something like, we want to maintain a minimum balance of a certain amount every month, so if we've realised that our closing balance is going to be below that minimum figure we want, we may need to take an overdraft. In this question, we don't have any, so we're just going to ignore those two lines. So. The closing balance for one month comes the opening balance for the next, as we've done before. So we copy this formula and paste that in there. And then we copy this formula, which is the closing balance for the previous month, and we paste that in there. Okay, I hope that makes a bit of sense to you.